So welcome again to another episode of Wine and Design. I'm here with Marshall Tilden. He is the VP of Sales for Wine Enthusiast and a good, good friend of mine for going on 20 years. Yeah, man. So it's been a long time. Long time. Nice to have you here. See ya. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Uh, wine that we're going to taste for you guys and then we'll get into business. So uh, we're here just to add a little bit to our wine enthusiast headquarters and so if you hear a uh, couple voices in the back maybe see a flash. <laughs> we got a little uh, photo shoot going on in the background so. It's, it's not us turning into superheroes I swear. Correct. Not yet. But we haven't tasted. We will. Well we haven't tasted the wine yet. That's true. That could happen. So the wine is an wine called Quattro, produced by Alta Winery. And Quattro refers to the four grapes, four of the five, well, I'll give you a little bit more, four of the five uh, Bordeaux varietals. So it's Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot. They left out the Malbec. It's Napa. It's a 14. It's a 14. And uh, it's pretty darn tasty. Pretty darn. Let's go in there. I like taste it. See what Sounds good. Very fruity. Very fruity, Very. exactly. A lot of dark fruit, black cherry. I like it. So 10 words or less, give me a description. Mm. Let's see. Oh, don't count, let's see. Uh, uh, balanced. Uh, uh, dark fruit, black cherry, oak, plum, uh, silky tannins. Good. And uh, long finish. Yes. Yeah, still still on. going on, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. I definitely have the dark fruits. It's um, very smooth. It's awesome. um, I love it. Good food wine, right? Good, yeah. <laughs> Great. It'd just be easy to drink all night. So We might. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> the acidity, too, is hanging on, which really, yeah. for me, blended to a lot of food. You could do this with, like, pot but you could... The tannins, you could do it with steak and beef and it would be fine. <laughs> you know I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So uh, let's kind of get down to business here. Okay. Talk about your personal cellar. Mm. What's in it? What's in it? Well, um, a lot of, not this particular, although this is there, but uh, having a lot of uh, trips to Napa, to wine country, oh, yes. I find that that's the most tempting time to go big on purchases, right? So you're in Napa, you're at a beautiful winery, you're tasting, and all of a sudden cases. you have, yeah, two, three yeah, cases yeah. later. So uh, it's it's fairly Napa heavy, but I, I'm I, I really an Italian wine um, is my preference. Uh, sometimes not in my price range, so sorry, Kathy, but sometimes. Sounds like Marshall needs a raise. <laughs> sometimes I gotta go there. Um, but I really, it really uh, spans everywhere. I have a lot of white Bordeaux, um, anything I can age. Okay. Right? I, I enjoy aged wine, and that's why we kind of do what do we, we do, do, right? Yeah. So anything that has the potential to age over you know three, four, five years and, and evolve and, and get better. So. What kind of racking do you have up in your cellar? So, I would love nothing more to have a giant display cellar in my home, but unfortunately I have no basement, uh, not enough rooms, and two small kids. Oh, yeah. So it's a it terrible equation, say. right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so my wine cellar is a, or Yurikovs that sit in my garage with solid doors, locks that nobody can get into except me, and protected from all of the, uh, you know, temperatures that a garage can yeah, have, both on spike, the yeah, yeah. cold on, and warm side. So. Uh, I got a, a couple of those in the uh, in the garage, and one day I hope to aspire to the to the big boy side. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? It would be. Okay. What about you? Um, I don't have one yet. Yeah. Um, I have two big, gigantic Great Danes, ah. and a small Boston Terrier that thinks he's a Great Dane, <laughs> and currently their cages are in my wine cellar space. <laughs> so one day, right. I will have the one. transformation. <laughs> well, luckily you'll yeah. know what you're doing. So what's the uh, <laughs> what's the coolest project you ever done? Um, you know. A couple come to mind, especially, you know, we're talking about the, the vintage you're racking is uh, a while back, Raymond uh, Winery was redoing their, their whole estate and they have different rooms in different sections if you go there for a tasting. So one of the rooms is a library tasting room. So they have an entire room, yeah, that's just outfitted with vintage view racks and they date back to 70s and 80s to like original vintages, 80s I think actually, uh, of Raymond and so you can go in and just taste verticals of, of Raymond Cab and some of their higher end stuff and it's beautiful. You can, we'll, we'll show the pictures here, we'll, we'll cut away from it so you can see. Right. Uh, and then more recently, I mean, they just lend themselves so nicely to, to steakhouses and like high end restaurants. So this uh, Benjamin Prime uh, Steakhouse in New York City, again, beautiful glass wall enclosures. They did an upstairs private 
dining room and just the whole thing is with the floor mounts, floor to ceiling, nice. double sided vintage views. So those are those are really the two coolest. I, and there's so many you know residential sellers that you do in the design it, is fantastic, but. A lot of times you don't get to see the end result, right? It's not right. it's not as easy to we, knock we on somebody's the door. Side, we don't get the back right, side, yeah. right? You can go to a restaurant and say, "Hey, that's cool. You mind if we come in and take a, a look?" You know, sometimes uh, residential they're not as uh, happy Just to opening. Yeah, they don't, for whatever reason, they don't want us in their home. I don't understand. Probably they're afraid we're going to drink everything. <laughs> Good call. But, um, <laughs> so, what are you drinking that not that necessarily everybody else isn't that you think they should be? Um, well, right now, I'm well, not right now. For the last couple of years, uh, so Terrazzi. I don't know. Okay. Terrazzi is a, uh, a DOCG, a region in uh, Campania, in southern Italy, and they call it the Barolo of the South. So they use a Alianico grape, and it's uh, the area is all these old volcanic soil leftovers, and so these wines have like big dark fruit. It's tot, right? right. Big dark fruit. Um, big tannins and there's this cool chalky minerality that comes out of them nice. and yeah and so people don't I don't think they know it they feel comfortable with Chianti and Super Tuscans right. and Barolos and all that kind of stuff but when you start to go towards the south people get a little more Italy is confusing yeah. right I, I've been studying wine for you know over a decade and <laughs> I still get confused by it but that but the Tarazis are can be you know good values out there too you know for 30 40 bucks you can find some really highly rated and, and high quality wines <laughs> yeah so uh um, three tips you would give a DIYer who's trying to put a cellar together. Three tips. Um, the first would be uh, be prepared for construction, right? So the I, I find well, see, it depends what you're doing, right? If you're coming in and, and putting up some just display racks on a wall in a living room, it's a different thing. But right. someone calls and yeah, someone says, and I, I want to build a cellar. Well, it's not a matter of just putting racks on a wall and right. throwing a cooling unit in a room, right? You got to insulate the wall. You have to prep the room. You have to make sure that the right kind of insulation and the right green board and all this is used. And then if you're using the vintage racks, you got to make sure that everything's supported the right ways. That you're hitting stuff, you know. So it's they're, they're just they are projects. They are not simple in and out kind of deals. That's okay. All right. What else you got? Uh, let's see. I would always build bigger than a current collection. Smart move. Right? So we always recommend 25 to 50% more than what you currently have. Because someone says, ah, I got a couple hundred bottles, I'll take this closet. Right? Two months later. They're calling you again. Right, the Which closet's okay got, us, what, it's but. fine, right? They got cases on the floor and things right. are spilling. We had a customer who had a... A, a seller in his carriage house in the downstairs part of it, and he had a couple thousand bottles. And three years later, he took the upstairs of the carriage house. Remember that one we did? Wow. And he built another 3,000 bottle cellar on top of the carriage house with a whole new set of cooling wow. system and wrap. I mean, you, you just outgrow what you have because it's a extremely um, all encompassing hobby, right? Once you get into it, it's. And it's very, it's fun and lucrative as well. Yeah, so. right, exactly. I mean, it's an investment part. Yeah. And so that's the third is always don't skimp out on the cooling, right? So wine racks are beautiful, showing the labels, label forward, all that is fantastic. However, if you're doing it to have some sort of investment into really age wine and evolve wine, cooling is just so important for wine to go where you want it to be. Yep, right? absolutely. What about you? I want to know what's your, um, what your biggest. Wine I've given in previous episodes, but it is mainly around cooling, and it is make sure that you build the room correctly if you're going to cool. Um, a lot of people, especially contractors, they do it backwards because they just don't listen. <laughs> or don't read. And it, yeah. Read. Exactly. Read. Read and manuals. It, exactly. <laughs> because the whole thing is, is you end up tearing it out if you don't. Yeah. And they don't get that. Yeah. Um, sizing the unit properly. Yes. And um, really just, you know, do you need humidity? Knowing where you are. Um, mm. You know, here you may not need humidity. In Colorado, we probably do. Yeah, no, so. that's a great no, that's a, a great point. And, and we've talked to cooling manufacturers who have said that, who, uh, I hate to use the word refuse, but they will just tell you, don't put in humidity until you live through a, a summer right. or, and a winter to see if you actually need it because humidity is not easy to hook it's into water lines easy. and to get it into the room. And it can cause issues if you have it and you don't need it. Completely. So. All right, well, thank you, sir. Yes. For, having, or for being here with us. Yeah, me thank you for being Great here. To see you. <laughs> and thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Wine and Design. Salud. Cheers. Cheers, buddy.